Hi. So this is the uh, second part of the ARIMA forecasting uh, using R video. Uh, in this particular video, uh, we are going to take uh, the second variable in our data, which is the uh, prices. Uh, in the previous video, we uh, learned how to uh, we we'll, we learned uh, about you know forecasting the return uh, stock return. And in this particular video, we are going to learn uh, forecasting uh, the uh, prices uh, and the reason why we had separate, you know, se we are doing it separately because the behavior of stock price and the behavior of stock return is different. We have seen that the stock return tend to be more stationary or tend to be more suitable for a simple time series whereas stock prices tend to have an upward trend in our data it could have a lower uh, downward trend also sometimes but in our data it's uh, upward trend and uh, that seemed to be uh, validating some of the basic uh, assumption of stationarity and it, it, it is clear that it is a non-stationary series uh there is uh, and and that has to be dealt in a in a way to make it stationary and and then the uh, standard procedure um, procedure for arima can be followed so let's see uh okay so we'll first load the time series packages and then we'll attach the stock data and then uh, let's start with the exploration so let's first see how the prices looks like okay. so let's seen already that is an upward trend and that seem to be non-stationary we have to do a statistical test to prove that this is non-stationary to be sure of it so we'll do a accumulated decupular test uh, for the prices data and let's see what the p-values P value is 0.95. That means we are sure of this fact that it is, uh, you know, non-stationary. That means we are accepting this null hypothesis that it is non-stationary, right? Okay. So if it, the data is non-stationary, what do you need to do? You need to do a difference. And what should be the order of differencing? Well, that's a very interesting question. Start with the first differencing and then see if the data becomes uh, stationary or not if it is not then go ahead with second differencing and so on right so we'll do the first differencing okay so what do you do we simply uh, 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 you know define a new variable d dot prices it's a new variable and we take the difference the function diff is going to do that for us all right all right so we have now a new series uh, which is uh, difference of prices. Okay. You can also do a summary statistic of it to just to uh, you know know how these two things uh, look like. Okay, d dot prices. Okay. So let's run this, and you will see prices has uh, a mean of. 1236 whereas when you do a differencing uh, the mean uh, median minimum maximum all is everything is different okay because we have done a differencing of of the data right so it becomes little more stationary okay so let's see whether it's stationary or not so we'll do a decapular test again all right so the p-value in this case is 0 0.01. That means we are rejecting null hypothesis, accepting the alternative hypothesis that it is stationary. Now that that means in the first differencing itself is making the data stationary. We don't have to go to the next order of differencing. We don't have to differentiating it, uh, differencing it again, right? All right. So let's look at the ACF and PACF. Like let's look at the ACF first. Look at the ACF, only the first order lag is significant and the rest are all insignificant because it is all lies between the blue line, between the confidence interval 
and hence it's uh, seem it seems to be following um, an AR1 process, right? So let's look at the PSA. None of the lags are significant, okay? But we'll include some of these MSC uh, lags and just to see whether it, it really improves or it doesn't improve, okay? Most probably it's not going to improve because it seems to be, uh, you know, none of these lags seem to be significant. Or maybe the first lag is significant. Let's let's see that in a model estimation. So we go to the model estimation, which is step two in the box Jenkins uh, Arima model estimation. So remember in this case that we have taken the new series data. That means we have already taken the differencing data. So don't do so. Don't change the differencing operator as one because we have already taken the differencing. So you don't have to do that. Just keep it zero. If it make it one, that means you are differentiating again. So you are doing twice differentiation. Now, if you use only prices, then you can use here one. But since we are using the diff, uh, the variable is already difference. You don't have to use. That means we are already using it as a uh, you know differentiation okay so let's run this or let's do the estimation and you can see uh, the air one term there's only one term so remember the first uh, remember this is uh, a, a arima 111 model okay so the first model is uh, Arima one one zero, okay, and the AIC value is two thousand one hundred forty two point five. Okay, let's go to the next one. So the next one is Arima two one zero. Okay, so we are taking two AR term in this case. So So the two air terms you can see that the AIC value is increasing that means it's not adding any va uh, value to the model so no point in adding another air term so let's see whether MA terms really makes a difference so now we are having ARIMA 111 okay one air term first difference and first uh, one MA term okay so this one is arima one 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 remember this is zero but we are using the first difference of uh, variable hence it, it means that it's the first difference is there so it's arima one 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 okay all right so let's estimate it all right so it's very close to the first one Right, 2152. So, AC value is very close, that means it's also a suitable model. Right, you can you know you can use either of 110 or 111. Okay, both are fine. Right, uh, so let's go with uh, 111 because uh, we have an M atom, and it seems that uh, the results are going to be more stable with uh, an MA term in place but the air uh, you know arima 110 is also doing fine okay uh, this can be further validated by using a cross validation technique okay so uh, some people take a sample of the data and then if you're confused like I, I was saying in the previous video sometime it is not going to be very clear which one is the best model some of the model could be you know, exactly same uh, AIC value. So that should not be the criteria alone. One should actually go ahead and check the cost validate it and see if there is a significant difference between these two orders. And then uh, you can decide which one is uh, more suitable. We can go ahead with ARIMA 111. Okay, so we'll do the uh, diagnosis of the uh, residual terms. Okay, so we'll first uh, you know estimate it and then 
do the diagnosis. All right. Now, when we do the diagnosis, we'll see we we see that there is no clustering uh, of uh, the residual uh, uh, you know data points. There is no pattern, and it seems that it is revolving around zero. Uh, so it's it's very similar to a white noise process, and we can also see that none of the uh, autocorrelation function uh, with respect to the lag is significant. That means everything is under this confidence interval, the blue lines, right? So there is no autocorrelation between the residuals. Um, hence, that seems to be uh, the model seems to be statistically fitting the data, and uh, there is no violation of the assumption of Arima model. All right, so that's the third step or the last step of the uh, Arima model forecasting. Okay, so it should be step three. All right, the module it's done. You can you know use this model, the final model for forecasting, like the way we uh, did last time. So we just have to use the uh, estimate it and then predict it and then find the values. So we can use the function predict in order to do that. Um, okay, and we are going to predict the next five observations. Okay, all right. So we have observation till uh, two fifty five, and then we are predicting for the next five observations. Uh, Okay, what we can do is that for prediction purpose, maybe we can use the real model. Okay, and then because it is giving the difference values, okay, which is what we don't want, we want the prices values, right? So we are using prices, and then uh, the order is 111 because you know when you use a difference operator, then uh, the predicted values are also in the reference operator, and then you have to you know. It, it's difficult to interpret, right? So better we estimate in this way and then use the prediction. All right, so you can see the actual values. Uh, of course, there is a difference. Uh, the difference uh, values are also there, uh, but the actual forecast values from the last five observations or the forecast observations using the ARIMA 111 are the follows are the following. Okay, so these five values are the forecast values for the next five periods, right? And you are fitting the data with Arima 111 with the first difference, first air terms, or first lag of air terms, and first MA term or one MA term. So that's how we can use Arima model in R to fit a non stationary data. We have already seen how to fit a stationary data. Uh, we also learned that prices normally are non stationary, return series is mostly stationary because it is already differenced, right? When you calculate return, it is you actually take a difference of the consecutive prices and divide it uh, by you know some prices and then you calculate the return percentage. That's already difference, hence it's likely to be more stationary. Thank you.